Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine the center, the vertices, the foci, and the asymptotes of a hyperbola when it's not given in our general kind of standard form that we have. You can see here where everything's written out, and it's going to be a little bit difficult for us to identify our A, B, H, and K when it's not in this format. So previously, just like we did for parabolas as circles and ellipses, what you um, what you notice is we always had binomial squares. Binomial squares help us to identify our h and our k. As well as having something in a rational form, we can determine our a and our b. Whereas this equation is not in neither of that, so it's very difficult for us, I don't understand how to look at it and say, oh, here's our h and our k and our b. So what we're going to want to do is create a binomial squared. Well, to create a binomial squared, we have to create a trinomial, a perfect square trinomial that we can factor down to the binomial squared. And that process is completing the square. So the, pr to do, the first thing we want to do is notice how our x's are grouped together and our y's are grouped together. X's, x's, and y's. So the first thing we're going to want to do is group our x's and our y's. So I have 4x squared plus 32x minus y squared plus 6y, and then I'll subtract a 39 on both sides. So you want to get the numbers now to, um, on, on their own side as well. OK, so now we have our x's and we have our y's. Again, what we want to do is we have two quadratics, ax squared plus bx plus c. But we don't have a constant for each of these quadratics, right? We have an x quadratic and a y quadratic. But both these quadratics don't have a value c. So we need to find the value c, which we call completes the square, or creates a perfect square trinomial. The formula to do that is taking your b divided by 2 and squaring it. But we have a problem. We can only take do b divided by 2 squared when our a is equal to 1. Well, in this case, um, our a is not equal to 1. So what I'm going to want to do here, you could think about this one's fact, you could group that together if you wanted to. But in this case, our a is not equal to 1. So therefore, I need to factor out that x squared, oh, x minus 3. Yeah, and you have to factor out a negative 1 here as well. x squared plus 8x. And then we'll factor out a negative 1. So I'm left with y squared minus 6y. There we go. Equals negative 39. So you've got to make sure that you factor out the negative 1 as well as the 1. So we can write them in parentheses. Yeah, that would work. OK, write them in parentheses just like that. Now that we factor them out, now I can take my b. So now that a is equal to 1, I can take my b, divide it by 2, and square it. So I have, uh, in this case, 8 divided by 2 squared. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. Over here, I have negative 6 divided by 2. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is equal to 9. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those values, and I'm going to plug them back into the equation. But I'm going to plug them into the parentheses so they create our perfect square trinomials. So I have 4 times x squared plus 8x plus 16 minus 1 times y squared minus 6y plus 9 equals negative 39. Now remember, whatever you do on one side, so you have to do on the other side. So I added these numbers inside to create perfect square trinomials. And what's nice about that is I can factor down my perfect square trinomials to binomial squared, which is exactly what we want. However, since I added a 16 to the left side, I have to add a 16 to the right side. But in reality, I really didn't add a 16. By distributive property, I added a 16 that's being multiplied by 4. So I need to multiply this 16 by 4. I added a 9. But I didn't really just add a 9. I added a 9 that's being multiplied by negative 1. So I need to multiply this one by negative 1. Therefore, now I'll break this down one more time because I have a little bit more work. So now, the main important thing is getting these binomials squared. To do that, we need to factor these down. So I'll write x plus 4 times x plus 4 minus y minus 3 times y minus 3 equals negative 39. 16 times 4 is going to be 64 minus 9. Now, I can write this out. I don't need to factor this. I can write this as a binomial squared. 4 times x plus 4 squared minus y minus 3 squared is equal to 16. Right? That's going to be negative 48. Yep, perfect. OK, but again, remember, it has to equal to 1. 
So I need to divide by 16 on both sides. And just like the distributive property, you multiply a number by both terms, uh, you divide by both terms, or you divide the 16 to both terms. So therefore I have x plus 4, 4 over 16 is 1 fourth, minus y minus 3 squared over 16 equals 1. Okay, so now I just need to identify the center, the vertices, um, foci, and asymptotes. Well, the center is, remember, always your h and your k. I know that a squared equals 4, so a equals 2. b squared equals 16, so b equals 4, because remember, it's always a squared minus b squared. So I'll say the center is opposite of h, opposite of k, so that's going to be negative 4, positive 3. Um, we need to determine, is this a horizontal or a vertical transverse axis? Since my a is under my x, it's a, ver it's a, sorry, it's a horizontal transverse axis. So if I was going to just sketch a quick little graph here, that would be a negative 4, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. My two vertices are going to be to the left and to the right, and my two foci are going to be to the left and the right. So therefore, my vertices are going to be, um, are going to be changing the x coordinate. So I'm going to go from negative 4, I'm going to go to the left and to the right a. So it's going to look something like this, negative 4 plus or minus a, which is 2, comma 3. And negative 4 plus 2 is going to be negative 2, comma 3. And negative 4 minus 2 would be negative 6, comma 3. The foci is going to be the exact same thing, except they're going to be a value of c, which I don't know c. So I need to go back to my formula, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, to determine c. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. c squared equals 16 plus 4. c squared equals the square root of 20. I can reduce my radical into 2 square root of 5. So therefore, that's just going to be written. I'm not going to write it out. I'm just going to write it as negative uh, 4 plus or minus 2 square root of 5, comma 3. And the last one is the asymptote. Okay, now the asymptote, again, since we're using a horizontal asymptote or horizontal uh, axis, this is my equation. I just need to plug in uh, my b, my a, and my h, and my k. So y equals uh, plus or minus b over a, so 4 over 2, which is just 2, times x minus h. So x minus 4 plus k, which is 3. And there you go. All right, uh, the next example, you can see again, now I have, uh, I'm gonna do the exact same process. Oops, so much for that. So I'm gonna do the exact same process, um, grouping my x's and grouping my y's. So I have 9y squared minus 18y minus 4x squared plus 24x equals 63, as I add a 63 to the both sides. Again, notice my a is not 1, so I need to factor out uh, my a for both of my two quadratics. So I factor out a 9, I'm left with y squared minus 9. y squared minus 9, no, 2. Here, I'm going to factor out a negative 4. That's going to leave me with an x squared minus 6x equals 63. Um, now I can complete the square. So I'll do negative 2 divided by 2 squared, which equals 1. And negative 6 divided by 2 squared, which equals 9. So I have 9 times y squared minus 2y plus 1 minus 4 times x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 63. And then I need to add 1, but that's being multiplied times 9. And I need to um, add a 9 that's being multiplied by a negative 4. So let's go and see what all of this adds up to. So I have 63 plus 9 um, minus 36, and I get 36 as my answer. Now again, you can factor, oh yeah. Um, remember, all, now we've created our perfect square trinomial, so we can factor them down to binomial squared. However, if you have a little trouble with factoring, uh, since I'm gonna, well actually, you can rewrite these as binomial squared. You should be able to factor these um, with some practice. You'll get really good at it. 
because binomial squared always factor to binomial squared. You don't have to factor it like this. You know, they sh you'll get used to knowing that they're always going to give you binomial squares equals 36. Now I just need to set it equal to 1, so I divide by 36 on both sides. 9 over 36 is y um, is 1 fourth. 4 over 36 is 1 ninth. Okay. I know that a squared equals 4, so a equals 2. b squared equals 9, so b equals uh, 3, because remember it's always a squared minus b squared. Uh, c squared equals 4 plus 9, uh, so therefore c squared equals 13. So c equals the square root of 13. I notice that my center is opposite of h, opposite of k, so that's going to be 1 comma 3. Um, remember, that's my h and that's my k. And then again, we know that this is vertical since my a is under my y. I know my vertices and my foci are going to be going vertically. That means they're going to be going up and down. Now, this graph is just a random sketch, right? Um, because all I'm really concerned about here with on this, for this random sketch, is for um, is me just to understand that, okay, I'm going to be moving up and down from my center. That means the y coordinate of my center is going to be changing when I'm determining the vertices and the foci. Actually, let me just write it out there. So the center, center is 1 comma 3. The vertices is going to be a distance of a up and down from the center. So that's going to be 1 comma 3 plus or minus a, which is 2, which gives me the coordinate points 1 comma 5 and 1 comma 1, Okay, which that doesn't represent, but you can see that it's going up or down. My foci are going to be also going up or down um, from the y coordinate, so it's going to be 1 comma 3 plus or minus the c value, which is the square root of 13. I can't simplify that, so I'm going to leave it as that form. And then last but not least is my asymptote. Since this is a vertical transverse axis, I'm going to use that equation. Just plug in a, b, h, and k. So y equals plus or minus a over b. a is 2 over b, so that's 2 thirds, times x minus h, which is 1, squared, plus k, which is 3. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you write the equation of ellipse by completing the square and determine the vertices, the foci, and the asymptotes and center.